Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to talk about prints. More specifically, I want to talk about the paper upon which the images are printed. In this case, Red River's Palo Duro Etching. Now, if you were to visit our home, beyond movie posters, lithographs, and an original painting or two, you'd see just over half a dozen framed photos hanging on our walls. These next photos, of the photos, are lit like crap, without a polarizer, auto white balance, handheld with an iPhone. None of them do justice to the images, but I wanted you to see them in context. And when viewed in real life, at normal viewing distances, oh, they make me happy. Six of them are 8x10s, urban scapes I've taken over the years in my hometown of New York City. A seventh is an a 3 size landscape Claudia shot during one of our road trips out in Colorado. The eighth photograph hangs on a wall all by itself, unframed. The one image I didn't print myself, a 27 inch by 40 inch black and white shot I captured back in April with the Fuji X-T2. Hey you, Kevin Raber of Luminous Landscape, thank you again for making this print for me and reminding me how amazing prints can be. Of the 8x10s, one was taken with an original 4 megapixel Canon 1D back in 2002, which I still have. One was taken with a 10.3 megapixel Leica M8, which I sold. And four were taken with a little 10 megapixel 1 over 1.7 inch, I mean, is there a name for that? Like maybe APS-C Tiny uh, Canon S90 point and shoot, uh, which I think is sitting in a drawer somewhere still. The A3, remember this is 13 by 19, was taken with a 12 megapixel iPhone 6. To me, they're all special, all the more so because once upon a time I had my own darkroom and well remember what it took to create prints via the chemical process. I appreciate just what an extraordinary distance the technology has come over the past 40 years. I mean, do the names Bessler, Schneider, Componon, Greylab, Dektal, D76, or AccuFine ring a bell for you? I also appreciate the fact that these particular photographs are part of our daily environment. Whether I'm consciously aware of them or not, they're always present. At some level, I always see them. They always inform our psyches. They enrich us. They elevate us. And not to get too philosophical, but other than whatever resources were used to create them, they now cost nothing to display, except in the dark, require no electricity to see, and I'm okay with the fact that, in the end, they will eventually degrade, return to dust, and leave no footprint, for the most part, other than in the memories of the people who saw them. All of which is a long-winded way of saying that I really, really, really like the conservation-grade Palo Duro etching inkjet photographic printer paper recently sent to me by Red River Paper. And yes, it's pronounced Palo, not Paleo, much as I prefer the lyricism of that in my ears. It's a beautiful, heavily weighted rag paper, 315 grams, creamy and textured, a perfect analog companion to the A-Cross simulation of the X-T2, especially when paired with something like my Canon PIXMA Pro 100 printer. Uh, and as it turns out, the L monochrome setting on my GH5. For comparison, I printed several of the same images on the PIXMA Pro 100 using Canon's own photo paper semi-gloss. The differences were substantial. Beyond the thickness and texture of the Palo Duro, uh, because it's made without optical brighteners, its whites are definitely warmer. And because it's a matte paper, the blacks, in fact all colors, yes I know the black is absence of all color, uh, are less rich or vibrant when compared side by side to a gloss or semi-gloss paper. And depending upon whether or not you use Red River's downloadable color profile, you should, you may find the blacks tinting toward blue. Now, here's the thing. With the right image, these characteristics provide a lovely, richer, more personal, less technical feel and help bring out the emotion of that image. When that's what you want or need. On the other hand, I do love my deep, rich blacks. I might have to try Red River's San Gabriel Barita semi-gloss or Aurora Art White. Now, interestingly, when I didn't have them side by side, I reveled in the richness and smooth tonality of the Palo Duro. And in the end, it's not that one is visually superior to the other any more than one LUT is superior to another. It's that each offers a very different choice. Or better yet, think of it uh, as an extra dimension 
to express the photographer's vision of how his or her image should be seen and experienced. And as I've now alluded to more than once, Palo Duro is as much about the physical experience as the image itself. As the person printing it, the one actually handling it, I can tell you that the tactile sensation of this particular paper takes me back to a simpler, slower, more permanent, more wondrous time, a more thoughtful time. For your clients, well, Palo Duro etching oozes quality, permanence, and worth, which, right, of course, will in no way help if your image doesn't measure up. You can order Palo Duro etching directly from Red River at www.redrivercatalog.com. 25 sheets of 13 by 19 costs 75 bucks. No affiliate link, nothing in it for me. I just really like the paper though. Full disclosure, I'm not sending the extra sheets back. Anyway, if you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below, share, add to a playlist, even consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links, which now work in over half a dozen countries, or even sending us coffee money directly via the PayPal link below. We thank you for it. And if any of you like one of these prints, if you'd like to have one, it seems a shame to just toss them, let me know why in the section below, and if it resonates with me, it's yours. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.